Hello, welcome to Fix Your Shitty Movement Monday. It's Monday, it's Labor Day. Hopefully you're sleeping. Hopefully you have the day off. I'm here to help you fix your shitty movement. And by that I mean, if a movement hurts you, if you're not quite sure, if your form is um, good, if you have been plateaued for a long time, I'm hoping that these segments will at least give you some insight as to some possibilities as to, or suggestions I should say, on how to help improve your movement. Um, we all have shitty movement, me too. This is actually my shittiest movement, so I know a lot about it. I've practiced a lot, I've worked on it a lot, and um, I mean, it's still, long way away from my deadlift but you know instead of being a crybaby about it I'm now focused on learning more about it and defeating this fucking thing um, so I don't dread bench day I actually really enjoy it um, even when I bomb I mean I'll throw a tantrum or whatever but I actually really enjoy the challenge okay so believe it or not bench press is the most technical most I don't know if I said it that way the most technical of the three big movements the squat bench and the deadlift uh, most people find that really hard to believe because they think the bench press is strictly a chest exercise. It's not. It's a compound movement. And so I'm going to split um, this tutorial into two segments. Today we're going to focus on the upper body. Um, I should say your torso, so I'm going to include your pelvis in that. Um, and then next time we'll talk about the lower half of your body, which is really the area that most people need work on. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss the most controversial part of the bench press, which is so fucking stupid that it's controversial because the only people who find controversy in this are people who don't understand powerlifting, who've never competed, um, like those really old school powerlifters who just can't comprehend the evolution of movement, um, and guys who lift alone in their garage and don't have friends. That's usually who it is. So you've probably seen, if you are watching this, some women bench with like the crazy high arch. I mean, men do too, but typically it's women. Women just tend to tend to have more mobility than men. Um, so that, I mean, I'm talking like some exorcist shit so that the range of motion when they're benching is like this. <laughs> and so a lot of people are like, how is that fair? That's ridiculous. Well, they have an advantage and it's a sport and you should use any advantage that you have to your benefit in a sport. So if you have like really long arms, then you're probably a good deadlifter. Um, it's kind of like trying to police the NBA or something like this guy is seven, three. It's not fair to the six, eight guys. Like, yeah, you can't play. That's fucking ridiculous. Everybody's allowed to go as high as they can in their arch while maintaining the other rules. So if we're talking USAPL heels down, head and shoulders down, um, and butt stays down. So if you can do that, move the weight and control it and follow the commands. Yeah, it's yours. Um, and if you're mad about their mobility, why don't you work on your mobility a little bit? So here's why we arch to protect your fucking shoulders. It's insane that you would think about flattening your back to, um, to do the bench press. Like I, I don't understand it. Um, I think the logic is to protect your back. Um, and so people are like, well, I thought you weren't supposed to arch your back when you lift. For axially loaded movements, yeah, you're not. So that squat, bench, um, <laughs> squat, deadlift, bent row, anything that where your spine is loaded, yeah, you need to have a strong neutral spine. But with the bench, you're not loaded that way. You're loaded with the weight over you, like this, right? So arching is fine. What I've found though, is that a lot of people arch excessively from their lumbar spine and not enough from here. And basically that means that when they're trying to fight or use their leg drive, they're really losing a ton of energy in, through their lumbar spine. Um, so remember there are, there are four different positions for your scapula, kind of. So there's elevation, depression, protraction, depression, or retraction, excuse me, excuse me. Got mixed up. So elevation, depression, protraction, retraction. So most people think that lat engagement is retraction and it's a lot of retraction to where they go into some elevation. And you can see when I do that, automatically my shoulders roll inward, right? And I'm all up in my traps. So if you just retract, that helps. But if you tried to depress, that is the promised land 
for your lips, right? And it's also the hardest for people to get, self-included. It's hard, it's a tough one. Um, so the arch, that's where it comes in. Now I have a big butt, so that means that I couldn't flatten my back on this bench if my fucking life depended on it, um, unless I was in like a full blown crunch. So um, I don't know why the crybaby lifting police would even address most women because they, most of us have that physiology. I shouldn't say most, but many of us. Okay, so when you're here, right, like I said, this nice little arch. So, um, and I'm not even trying right now. That is just my lumbar spine right now. Um, so the, what I was mentioning is that my pelvis is thrusted forward right now. And so I'm feeling a lot of tension in my lumbar spine um, and a, especially my sacrum. And so the way that I'm gonna minimize that is I'm going to scoop my feet forward and pull my pelvis into neutral. And that means that your pubic bone and hip bones are on the same horizontal plane, right? So then from there, I try to maintain that neutral pelvis and get my legs back. We're gonna talk a lot more about the legs. This is just important for helping you set up your thoracic spine. So then from there, I try to get as high up as possible on my traps. So I'm literally trying to push my shoulders down and together using the bench. And you see now that puts my, uh, the tip of my sternum way up high, right? So this is your xiphoid process. This is generally where I suggest people aim the bar. So then from there, if you're, um, you pull the bar down and aim for that spot, you see my shoulders are in this nice open position. If you were to aim higher, you would be like this and you can see how there's my shoulders are internally rotating now internal rotation is going to happen to some degree in the bench press what we're trying to do though is minimize that and um, if you were to those of you who can arch a lot in your low back if you just try to like relax your pelvis forward into that anterior tilt and then try pushing your feet you'll feel immediately how you push into your lumbar spine um, push with it and so you'll actually lose the tension in your top half too so you're just trying to create this little arch from your feet all the way to your shoulders and tension comes this way again we'll talk about the leg drive next time um, the other question a lot of people have is where to put your hands in the bench press so I went to a workshop um, these awesome married couple um, that have won everything possible the guy literally wrote the rule book for the usapl on the bench press so i think he knows a thing or two um they suggest that people everybody puts their or tries to put their index fingers on those rings so that's 81 centimeters i think um for strategy right for shortening your range of motion so the wife is like five one five two she has that grip she has her index finger on the ring and a big arch, couple that together, and then like, eek, right? Little short range of motion. But again, if you can control it, and that's your strategy, fuck yeah. Like, you're gonna be the best bench presser in the world because you have physiological gifts that allow you to do that, just like Michael Phelps, right? Like, ah, his feet are too big. Stop whining, just like, fuck. Everybody has an advantage. So, I digress. Going that wide, I tried it, just doesn't work for me. Um, and I know it's a mobility thing because my wrist will kind of get pulled in this way, which is also inviting um, internal rotation. Um, so I have found that pinkies on the rings works well for me. And the first time I teach the bench press to people, that's usually where I have them start. Um, some people need to go in even more and some people do like that wide position, especially if they have long arms and big hands, right? Um, so play with it. A close grip bench too, while we're talking about it, is not this, because look at what that does to your fucking shoulders. A close grip bench is usually like right over your shoulders, right? And so if you're already benching there, maybe try playing with some different positions, um, work on your wrist mobility. So the thing to remember is that thoracic extension is going to be your best friend. Your lumbar spine is gonna extend a little bit by necessity, right? Because it is a series of joints. Um, but that's that's really what depressed, retracted, depressed, retracted scapula are, right? So if you're depressed and retracted, right? You see how that automatically pulled my chest up? 
that's what we want as much as possible. Um, okay, so we covered a lot. I introduced you to the people I call the crybaby lifting police. They're gonna come up again, especially when we talk about sumo and how it's, a, uh, it's always something, right? But it's generally because chicks have more mobility than guys and that's why there's such huge crybabies about it, right? Not across the board, but that's usually it. Um, all right, let me know if you try any of these strategies, how they work for you, if you have any questions. I'm always happy to answer your questions. My name is Karis. This is FYSM, Fix Your Shitty Movement Monday. Happy Labor Day. Sleep in for me. I'll see you guys on the flip side.